Okay, so we're going to do chapter 16 and 17. We were looking at now the wind instruments. So this took me a while, and maybe if you were a music major, this may not be quite kosher to you, but I tend to, when I'm looking at the science behind instruments, I tend to put these two together because they both use the standing waves in air. So if I look at brass instruments and I look at woodwind instruments, they both use standing waves in air, so I combine them together. However, orchestra people combine them into these four categories. But for me, they, they, the physics behind them is the same, so I'm going to lump them together. So let's talk about woodwind instruments. Those are in chapter 16. So woodwind instruments are very, very old. And they include earlier instruments with like bones and wood and all of those and any way to generate uh, sound. sounds the same kinds of instruments and you will see, hear different sounds from every single one of them. So when you look at any of these wood instruments, the standing waves that are being produced in each of these waves are pressure antinodes and nodes. These will create standing waves like the ones that are shown here or here. And depending on where you place your finger, that's where the node is going to be. So high and low frequencies, which correspond to high and low pitches, will depend on the length of the column that you have, and also something that you can't control, which is air density. So the amount of humidity in the air, the amount of temperature in the air, and all of those, those things that occur naturally in the air. So the resonant frequencies of the air column therefore depend on the speed of sound in the air and the length and geometry of the air column itself. And the formula, this one we have seen many, many times before, is exactly the same. Where N is the particular frequency you're talking about, one, two, three, four, five, V is the speed of sound in the air, L is the length of tube. If you remember that this was exactly the same formula that we used when we were talking about standing waves in a string, like chapter maybe six or something, and we looked at the exact same formula. To me, what's fascinating is even when standing waves are 3D and they are being formed in air, the physics behind them is exactly the same. The sound is very different, but the physics is exactly the same. This is why all of these instruments and all of these techniques work so well together. But in this case, what are the nodes and the antinodes? They are pressure nodes and antinodes because they are being formed in air. <clears throat> so examples include the flute. Anybody play the flute? Woohoo, me too. I play the flute as well, right? So how do you play the flute? Do you do the, this one or, oh, you guys do this one? Okay, we used to do the one in the front. So the do you realize every single time that you press the button down, like on, on one of those uh, holes, it's actually creating a node at that point. And so the actual, freak, the actual standing wave depends on where you put the node. So higher frequencies, higher pitches will be shorter whereas longer will be when you place the finger at further away point. And those particular holes have to be certain distance apart. Just like when you were talking about the, the guitar and the frets, right? The same kind of phenomenon, same kind of physics, same formula, same everything, very different sounds. Does anyone play a clarinet? Or anything that has a reed in it? No. Anyway, this are, these are the different kinds of woodwind instruments. They are single reed, they are double reed, or they are air reed. 
a reed is just this little, it's made out of bamboo, right? And the reason why it's made out of bamboo is because bamboos are very um, flexible and also they offer little resistance. So they're very bendy. So you don't need a lot of force in order to make them move. And they attach them and they, instead of like the valves opening and closing, the reeds play the role of them. So when air flows in, these open and these cause vibrations. So open, air goes in and that creates the, the sound. For physicists, the important part is that there is a pressure antinode exists at the reed. And that's part of where the standing wave will be formed in a clarinet. Examples of single reed clarinets are those. Double reed instruments are more complicated. So instead of having one reed vibrate, now you'll have two reeds vibrating. And it's the same kind of phenomenon, the same standing wave will form, but instead of one part vibrating, you'll have double the vibration. And again, a pressure antinode will exist at the reeds. This is so pretty. So the different parts of the clarinet, include the mouthpiece, the main body, and the bell. <clears throat> Note, when you are creating the sound, the standing waves, you are creating the standing waves to the point where you're holding them down. Bell, what the bell does is it amplifies the standing wave as, as it comes out. Okay. So the standing wave already exists between where you hold it down and where your mouth is. But the bell, because of its shape, it's like our ear, right? What does our ear do? It's shaped this way, right? For collection. But imagine if you were emitting, oh, speakers. How are your speakers made? That way, right? because the speaker is the one that's creating the sound wave, but then it has to be amplified. So the, um, the way to increase the amplitude is to make a cone. And that's what this does, the bell does. It's shaped like that. <clears throat> 